headquarters in Italy, General Mark Clark, commander of the Allied Fifth Army, inspects troops of the Brazilian Expeditionary Force, now under his command. On the reviewing stand, General Masarenas de Moraes, Brazilian commander, and General Clark watch a formal review marking Soldier's Day, a Brazilian national holiday, and the first time Brazilian troops have ever observed that holiday on foreign soil. The Brazilian Expeditionary Force is now undergoing final intensive combat training preparatory to going into action side by side with their allies in the 5th Army. Secretary of State Statinius is host to delegates to the Dumbarton Oaks Conferences on a tour through the state of Virginia. An informal picnic lunch is enjoyed by members of the American, British, and Chinese delegations as after a week of concentrated work at Dumbarton Oaks, they move out of doors for a brief moment of sightseeing and relaxation. Alexander Cadogan, Chief of Britain's delegates, Dr. Wellington Koo, China's delegation head, and British Ambassador the Earl of Halifax, Stettinius, Dr. H.H. H. Kung, China's Vice President, and Dr. Koo, Joseph Gru, former U.S. Ambassador to Japan. The delegates visit Monticello, historic home of Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, and third President of the United States. of James Monroe, fifth president, at his home, also in Virginia. A day in the Virginia countryside for statesmen of the United Nations upon whose shoulders rests heavy responsibility in the outlining of post-war security. Carrying a load of supplies for Russia, a United States Army train pulls into Tehran, Iran, for special ceremonies honoring the sending of huge tonnages of war materiel to Russia. American General Theodore Osborne of the Persian Gulf Command breaks a bottle of vodka over the powerful diesel locomotive. rugged Iranian countryside, over great plains and high mountains on the Iran to Russia route, vast quantities of American-made weapons and supplies of war have been delivered to the Russian ally. The freight yards of Tehran are a vital junction between the American and Russian war machines. In formal ceremonies, high officers of the American and Russian armies pay tribute to work performed by the men and women of their commands. The special train comes in, 
now drawn by a Russian locomotive with Russian personnel. Major General Donald H. Connolly, commanding general of the Persian Gulf Command, officially turns the cargo over to the commander of Soviet forces in Iran, General Ivan Kargin. The train's flags are transferred from American to Russian guards of honor. Connolly congratulates the Russian girl fireman, Valentina Vervahova, a veteran of this vital railroad route, which has played an invaluable role in supporting and supplying the great Russian offensives. August 1941, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill at sea meet to draw up the Atlantic Charter. Then Casablanca, January 1943, and plans for the liberation of France. Then Tehran, that helped to seal the fate of the German armies. Now into a Quebec station comes an official train carrying England's Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. Accompanied by Mrs. Churchill and Mackenzie King, Churchill walks to a nearby auto to meet once more with America's President Franklin Roosevelt. One of the most important points on the agenda, this their eighth conference, Roosevelt and Churchill are expected to discuss plans for the future conduct of the war in the Pacific. American and British leaders proceed to the historic Quebec Citadel, where they last met 13 months ago, on the Citadel Parade Grounds. With Allied troops on German soil, Roosevelt and Churchill prepare for one of the most significant of all their conferences. The dome of the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. is ready for repainting. Every four years, steeplejacks and painters perform this big and difficult job, swarming over the dome of the soaring structure which houses the Congress of the United States. a special job of cleaning and painting. For with victory over Germany, the statue of the goddess of freedom, atop which an adventurous steeplejack now stands, will again be illuminated. Mm -hmm. 